What's up everybody? Welcome to Chit Chat with Nat. We're on Naturally Unfiltered. Today is gonna be a recap day. I'm recapping the latest episode of The Challenge. I missed last week because I went live with Cam. The interview with Cam will be linked in my summary. I'm so excited. Well, today I did a little TikTok. Um, I showed people how to do a natural facelift. So if you're 30 like me, it's really good. I've been working on so many interviews. I even have a Big T interview coming up, a Josh Martinez interview. I've been interviewing a few of the castmates and older and previous uh, cast members as well, and people from other TV shows, including Khloe Kardashian's Revenge Body. I'm getting down to it, getting all the information for all of you. So today, let's review Recap 6. I'm pretty sure it's episode 6. If I'm mistaken, sorry. <laughs> was crazy. There's relationship drama. It's only game. Why you have to be mad? Everyone in the bunker is going mad. Obviously, it's not looking good for Jay. Unfortunately, Jay gets eliminated, which really sucks because I was voting and rooting for Jay. It ends up that Jay actually got a minor concussion. I shot him a text. He let me know that he had a minor concussion from that. He got slammed very hard. I've been seeing on social media though that Rogan and him are still interacting, still chatting, and still talking. So that's a plus. That elimination was stacked against Jay. Unfortunately, he went home this week. But give your thoughts about Jay. I think that he was a warrior. I love that he didn't give up. And I love that production and TJ were like, dude, you gotta go. Like, you are not medically cleared to play the rest of the rounds. Thank goodness he was let go because he had a minor concussion. And you all know that's really bad. And um, it can it can actually turn into long-term complications. So that's that for Jay. He deserves to be back on the show. He deserved to make it to a final this season. He played so hard. I'm proud of him, and I can't wait to see him and watch him on future seasons. I love you. I also like that they're showing, I love when they show background stuff, like showing the producers, showing the real aspect of the show, the realness, the behind the scenes, seeing how we really do get hurt as challengers. You really do get, dude, you get beat up and it's dangerous. So showing medical professionals going in and showing producers being like, dude, you're not medically cleared. This is dangerous. It really shows the severity of the show and how people truly can get very, very hurt. My heart is broken that Jay got eliminated, but the show must go on. Now we have Jenny, Rogan, and Dee with Red Skulls. I don't remember if there's anyone else with Red Skulls, but we there's not that many people in the house with Red Skulls because Jay had two Red Skulls, he got eliminated, so now there's only a few people. These Red Skulls are going to be very difficult to get. As you see, the challenges are getting harder. They just did the Fast and Furious challenge, and the eliminations are getting even harder. Jenny's elimination against Jen was the easiest elimination of the season to win. That would have been the elimination to actually guarantee your safety. But you're not guaranteed to not get called out for elimination or house votes to get put for elimination through the rest of the season. Jenny's guaranteed uh, a run to the final. I don't know if Jenny makes it to the final or not, so I'm not spoiling anything. From knowing the show, from being on the show, and from seeing her size and her agility and her strength, this girl, no one's going to go against her in an elimination. She's making it to a final because she has a red skull and no one else is going to want to battle her. They want to go against the easiest person to beat, so they're guaranteed a ticket to that final. There is a lot of relationship drama I'm seeing with Jenna and Zach. I don't really want to get into it. I wish them the best. Obviously, me and Zach have had our differences where he's attacked me for no apparent reason that I'm aware of. And um, obviously, I've glittered him two different seasons on Final Reckoning and on uh, War of the Worlds. So Why are you bullying me? You know, some people have their relationship situations. I can't go into their relationship because I don't know them in that aspect and 
You know what? Everyone goes through really difficult situations. Everyone goes through really bad or toxic relationships. And it's up to people in those relationships to work together to either, you know, fix the relationship or move on from it. So I have nothing to say about it, but I wish them the best. I mean, I've been in really bad situations. I've been in really bad relationships before, as a lot of people have. Uh, my boyfriend I had before I left on Big Brother, actually, we were not in the best relationship and I was so heartbroken. I was so in love with him, but also really, really sad when we were dating because it was just not the best relationship and we didn't see eye to eye on anything. So it was like, you're in love, but you're miserable. Leave my life situation um, to get away. And the only way to get away from that boyfriend was to get on a TV show. So that was something that was helpful for me to just release and uh, move on with my life. I also agree with Jordan, you don't stop anyone from enjoying and fulfilling their dreams and most importantly work that pays their bills. Um, the only comment I'll say about the Jenna and Zach thing, I believe in a relationship that one person should be encouraging the other person, both people should be encouraging each other to live out their dreams, live out their goals and an opportunity to be on the challenge is not forever. We're all getting older, there's always going to be new meat, fresh meat, new people. There's lots of people that deserve and would die to be on the show so for me um letting someone live out their dreams especially going on a show and, and like this that you get to be a competitor and a challenger and a badass beast i feel like your partner should always you know a partner in my opinion should help you grow and flourish as a person um, and never hold you back from that and trust is also a really important thing in relationships so um, I really do wish them the best in, in that relationship. Also, Johnny and West Alliance gets better and better. And when they're involved, you know, it's going to be sabotage time. <laughs> I laugh so much of them uh, remaking Queer Eye. Like, I literally couldn't breathe when they were, like, redoing the Queer Eye. So these two viejitos are so funny together. I like them working together. This hair is, like, crazy. I like them working together. And we're just going to go with my hair like this because, you know, my, my face lift today. <laughs> Um, the two yejitos are really funny working together. It's a really, it's a, I enjoy watching them. Also, how does Kayla stay so fit? She has a great body and she just stays fit. Like this girl can drink and stay fit. The Bear and Kayla situation is created by the, is literally created by the bunker. I mean, you get so bored on these shows, you can fall in love with a wall. I've fallen in love with, you know, dirt on the floor on shows before because you're literally so bored. So Nani is correct. So many people would kill for that position to be on the challenge. So that's something that I'm always mindful. And that's why I, I have a lot of respect for Big T because she's so passionate about being on the challenge. And I just got the pleasure of interviewing her. I can't wait to release that interview, but she really talks about how, you know, she gives it her all. And I love that someone, and she wants to go back on. And, and I have so much respect for, you know, people, that, if you're in the game, be really passionate about it. As you saw me on War of the Worlds 1, I was really, uh, you know, passionate about being on the challenge. That's why I went on, but I was mentally checked out. So you really have to be mentally checked in and just giving it your all to be on these challenges to really survive. Wes is right, it's a good week for a girls elimination with all the drama happening. And I saw that Bailey and Swaggy are talking to, to Wes at that point and Wes is giving them real factual advice. It is true, when you see Kayla's you know, down in the dumps, Jenna's down in the dumps, it is a good a week because if you're mentally and emotionally beat, um, your chances of winning something because you're not really mentally checked into the game are, are, are not as high. But you never know. You could still win when you're, you feel mentally defeated. Uh, Bailey and Swaggy are such a beautiful couple. They're both so beautiful. Like, they're so cute. They're going to have the most beautiful babies I've ever seen in my life. There's drama popping off left and right. <laughs> this bunker has turned everyone insane. I wouldn't have lasted in this season. No way. I did Big Brother. That's enough for me of living in a closed environment with no windows. Big T is amazing. She never quits. Um, and she just, I just love, she's one, truly, you guys have seen my recaps. She's one of my favorite contestants. And she, she doesn't need to win to, to be the best. She is still inspirational by just her positive attitude and her eagerness to do her best. And there goes when TJ said, who wants to quit? And I really love how TJ calls people out like that. And yeah, that's a really uncomfortable situation to be in. But great for TJ, like calling people out. If you want to quit, then quit. Don't say it. 
because there's viewers watching that, you know, they want to be on the show. There's so many people that ask me, Nat, I want to be on the challenge. People from Survivor, people from all different shows are constantly asking me, how do I get on? Because I do casting recruiting as well, but not for the challenge. So all these people want to know how to get on the show. And there's even people that haven't been on other shows that still want to be on the challenge. So saying those things can really, you know, it can hurt other people that want that opportunity. So TJ calling people out that don't want to be on the show anymore is actually a good thing. But Bear goes, winners never quit and quitters never win. This is why I like Bear, guys. He just always comes in with those funny one-liners. But there's a lot of meaning and symbolism from what he said. It's so true. Also, side note, Swaggy and Bear are made for the challenge. Like, you really see them shine. You see how smart Swaggy is. You see how great um, Bailey is. They're both great socially, mentally. They're just a great team. And you really see all their strengths on the challenge. And that's really, really cool to see their relationship unfold on the challenge, but also how they protect each other, how they love each other, and how each of them are amazing as individuals, but also amazing in a group as a relationship. I really love how Swaggy and Jordan are protecting and fighting for their women, and how Jordan's not even, uh, he's fighting to win for his, he, I love how Jordan is fighting to get uh, his fiance, the Red Skull, Tori, and he's always thinking about Tori. Tori's, he puts Tori before him, and that's a really, like, I feel like, I don't know Jordan like that, but he has a, already a strong, solid foundation. He's a very strong person, has a strong mind, has his shit together, and I, I love that he's a rock, and Tori, he's always thinking about Tori putting her first because he already is a solid foundation. So he's like a real man and he's putting his woman in front of him and he wants his woman to flourish and prosper and be her best. So I really love that. That relationship is, that's pretty dope. Uh, Nani and, uh, Nani's a great competitor. Nani. And Nani and Jordan are obviously a solid team. That's a so team you wanna be on. D and Swaggy go, uh, Tori and Josh lost a pu puzzle piece, but luckily Jordan gets to compete twice, so then he can also compete for a second chance to help Tori out so that he can pick and choose what he needs to do to protect Tori in the game or get her to advance in the game. Josh and Tori could have won. Um, they finished so quickly on their half, and they had it all done before the other their opponent team, so they really could have won. This season is getting super messy. Also, I would have loved to play this challenge because you're not high up and I hate heights, but you're harnessed in. I was a gymnast, so I'm like a little monkey. So this would have been like my challenge to win. I would, and I just needed to be paired up with someone that's really good at puzzles. So if you put me on that with like a Jordan, fair game, you know? That one I'm jealous of. I don't want to be on this season, but that challenge I wanted to do, that I was like jealous watching it. So I would be so scared to drop a puzzle piece. I would have major anxiety doing this one. Uh, you cannot drop a puzzle piece or your game is over. And everyone had one chance of going, only Jordan had a chance to go twice. Wait a minute. I love how Corey is like a good angel on, on his shoulder. So we have here uh, Nelson going off on Anissa. Anissa is a really smart player. She's socially surpasses everyone, right? She's a social player. She just knows where the power is. Anissa is a great player. She has so much experience. And Nelson honestly has a point with what he's saying, but this is where it's wrong. Um, I don't, because even Corey said he doesn't believe what Nelson is saying is kind of true. You know, it doesn't apply in this situation. But Nelson is giving us a backside of how things could be. So basically what I'm trying to say is there is already back underground politicking that happens on the challenge that never really gets aired. Um, there's just so many intertwined puzzle pieces and so much stuff that goes on. And Nelson, you know, was exposing that. But in this case, I don't think that was the case. I think Anissa actually wanted to win because she even said it. I think that if Anissa didn't want to win, she would have just been like, yeah, I threw it and I don't care, you know? Melissa also is stunning. Uh, also, she's not my type, everyone, but she's beautiful, so calm down. Don't get any ideas. Um, she crushes it. Her and Johnny as a team, solid team. They do really, really well. And Bear and K Casey finished their puzzle, so that's that's just good that they finished it. Wes is being a good teammate. You have to be supportive and encouraging and be level-headed with your teammate. Sorry, I'm scratching my nose. This is G. 
So Wes knows with experience that having a teammate, if you beat your teammate down and talk to them rudely and yell at them, scream at them, belittle them, whatever, it's going to get them to be more like spastic. It's going to get them to be uh, more anxiety filled and stressed. And they're not going to perform with a clear mind. They're going to be more uncomfortable, and it's going to be tougher to um, it's going to be tougher to compete. So the the more communicative, if the more you communicate in a positive note to your and uplift your partner, the more that your partner is going to succeed in the game. Hence, me and Final Reckoning with Polly. Polly uh, would yell and and go nuts on everyone else. Obviously, we saw that. But with me, he never raised his voice at me. He was always talking to me calmly. In the final, yeah, he screamed that one time in the final, but the final is all, all fair, love and war. I mean, the final, all bets are off, right? But uh, during the season, he never once yelled at me. He always encouraged me. And when we got back to the redemption house or whenever we, you know, after we finished each elimination, whether we won or lost, which we lost more than we won, I felt. I, that's how it felt. He never yelled at me. He's like, how do we fix this? We both communicate, talk. Be like, all right, this is your your weakness. This is my strength. This is my strength. This is your weakness. Let's figure out our strengths and weaknesses and let's grow together. So as you go into these games as individuals, but when you're teamed up with someone, you have to learn how to work together, right? So you have to figure out someone's strength and weakness and the other partner's strength and weaknesses and mix those together so that you know how to, and good communication, positive communication, um, and uplifting and encouraging each other. And once you have that good chemistry, I mean, it's fair game. You saw me and Polly took each other to the final. It took us a whole season to learn each other, to learn how to communicate. I mean, mind her, Polly already knew. Like when we did the Boulder Challenge on, on, final, Re on final Reckoning, Polly started that Boulder and then I lifted it up the hill. And I let him rest and take rest because my endurance, women do have better endurance than men. It's just in our chemistry, it's our biology, it's how, how we are. Men, um, and so my endurance is just so good, not to toot my own horn, but that is one of my strengths that I was able to finish that for us, you know, and let my partner, I couldn't start strong because I'm not fast like Polly, right? But I know with my endurance, I'll catch up to him and then I can finish when he gets gassed out and tired. I'll, I'll finish it and take it down to the finish line. So you have to learn how to work together. Um, so Wes was, he was, it was great watching him and how he's a really positive teammate and how he's an athlete. This challenge is getting messy. Nelson's popping off on Anissa. Then we have Bailey popping off on, was it Jordan? Everyone's popping off on everyone. People are getting annoyed now. I mean, we saw in the last few weeks of this season that everyone's popping off on everyone in the house, um, lots of fights are breaking out. I'm sure there's probably more fights than, that weren't even aired, but everyone's popping off on everyone and now people, the stakes are high. The season, now you're gonna see, like everyone is at capacity for, for being able to like stand anything. So they're at maximum capacity for tolerance and now any little thing is just gonna trigger people, they're gonna go off and it's gonna get worse from here because it's going to be so hard to get a red skull. So now we're gonna see the game. So the game went from here, right, to here really quickly. Now we're gonna see in the next few weeks, in the next week, two, two weeks, the game is gonna go up another notch. It's just gonna go hard because it is getting close to the fine, closer to the final and people don't have red skulls. Uh, so it's gonna get dirty. Jordan and Nani win this. Um, I don't know what to feel about the Bailey situation. Was Jordan trying to win with Nani um, because he had two tries? We don't know. I don't know. We don't know. So do you guys think that Jordan was trying harder to win with Nani than with Bailey? Jordan is 10 steps ahead and is solidifying Jenna going in and not leaving it to the house because we all know that the house flips and flops. Jordan is a mental player as well. He's a physical player. Jordan can win all the seasons he's on. He's a great competitor, right? So we see here that he's thinking 10 steps ahead. He knows that if Tori wants to go against someone, already Jenna wants to leave, she's mentally checked out, so Tori will have a higher chance of going against her. So he doesn't want to leave it to the house vote. So let's say he voted in Tori. He doesn't want to leave anything for chance. He doesn't want to leave the house vote up in the air, right? So he wants to solidify Tori's opponent, which is really smart. The game is just gonna get harder and harder, guys. This is one of the hardest seasons ever. 
I can't wait for you guys. I, I can't wait to finish watching it. And I can't wait for you guys to see all the rest of my interviews. I hope you watch my interview FaceTiming with Kara. The audio wasn't that great. It was a little fuzzy and pixelated, but I learned to do Zoom conferences. So all my interviews coming up are gonna have better audio. They're gonna be on Zoom. I have Josh Martinez, Polly Calafiori. I have someone from Revenge, Khloe Kardashian's Revenge Body. I have Big T, I have Georgia. I have a lot more people that I'll be interviewing in the time to come. And I also have one of my NFL cheerleader teammates uh, that I interviewed to see what she's up to. And I can't wait to share all these interviews with you and everything else I've been working on. So stay tuned. Love you guys so much. Besito.